That was a lie. I didn't actually just wake up. I've been sitting on my phone for 20 minutes in my bed, and then I set my camera up on the counter over here and pretended to wake up, but it was all a lie. I'm just running out of ideas for how to do the morning intros for these videos. morning so while I had you guys down here time lapse and by the river I took that time to uh, sit up here in the van and get all my dishes done I'm also making some coffee so I've had my door open for the entire time that I was doing my dishes and not a single mosquito has flown in I guess maybe they don't like to get up earlier come out in the morning so it's been pretty mosquito free here which is nice and it did actually rain all night last night it's still pretty cloudy as you guys can see but it did rain all night last night, which honestly is one of my favorite things that happens at night. It's just such a peaceful way to fall asleep with the sound of rain hitting the side of the van. But if you guys are following along, I'm currently two hours south of Whitehorse on my journey up to Alaska. And for those of you guys who might be new here, my name is Ryan. I live out of the back of my self-converted camper van. Typically I'm down in the States. Right now I'm in Canada in the remote Yukon territory camping just off the Alaskan highway, which is over there. But like I said, we are two hours south of Whitehorse, which is the biggest town that you're going to drive through when driving the Alaskan Highway, and also is the capital of the Yukon. I think it's roughly around 30,000 people live there. I did Google it. They do have a Walmart, which that'll definitely be the first Walmart I've seen in a while. And a little bit more than just one main street, which is what most of the towns that we've driven through up to now have had. Just one little street with a couple convenience stores and maybe a restaurant. This little campsite has a bear-proof trash can. Ooh, someone had some rotisserie chicken last night. My trash thrown out. Beautiful. The landscape out here though is just stunning. Even in places like this where you're kind of down low and all you see is trees, it kind of reminds me, especially with the clouds of like Twilight or Oregon or something. Very beautiful. And last night in the middle of the night, I stepped out to take a pee and it was probably the quietest thing that I've ever heard in my entire life. It wasn't a single sound. No one was on the road. Very peaceful. But since we are on a road trip, and not a camping on the side of the road in the Yukon trip. We gotta hit the road again today. And we've actually made some pretty good progress. Once we get to Whitehorse, we are gonna be closer to, well, we're definitely closer to Alaska, but we'll be closer to Fairbanks than we are anywhere else in Canada. So that's very exciting. And we've got 15 hours total of driving yet. So I'm gonna get five or six down today, five or six down tomorrow, and then we're gonna get to Fairbanks the day after that. Also, I don't know what it is, maybe it's just this trip or something, but I have grown very fond of oatmeal for breakfast. I think it's just because it's so easy, because like I can just fill this thing up and that's all the preparation I have to do. Pop the kettle down, turn it on. So I think while I wait for this to kind of set up, I'm gonna go get my Starling taken down, get the van ready to go. Oh, wait. I always forget to do this. I take my Starlink down, but I remember this time. Also, I hate doing this because that means I lose all my internet connection, but got to. Starlink, slide to stow, makes it easier to put away. I just forgot to do it, but very happy I remember this time. So this town of Whitehorse is somewhere that I've kind of wanted to make my way to for a long time, but you really would never go unless you were driving the Alaskan Highway. Definitely cool to finally be able to go. Definitely gonna check out some of the cool weird stuff they have, but we can't stay for too long because we gotta drive five or six hours today. It really is so nice out here. Let's hit the road.
we've made it to the city of Whitehorse, the capital of the Yukon. And you can tell we've made it because there's more than just one road. And right now we're heading down into the city center of Whitehorse because I am starving. And I looked up places to eat and this place called the Dirty Northern had some pretty good reviews, so that's where we're gonna get lunch. It's so crazy how blue all of the water is out here. I wish the water in Baltimore was like this. That would be nice. Beautiful day out today too. It was raining all morning and then maybe an hour ago, all of the clouds went away and it's a beautiful, clear, sunny day now. But it does feel weird to be in a city slash town again after being for so long just in the middle of the wilderness. It feels very out of place. But I am glad that it's here because I am starving and uh, can't wait to eat. All right, so I think the restaurant is down there, kind of on that main street. So let's find some parking and then walk over there. So far, a really nice town. Looks like it'd be a very peaceful place to live. I think I do have some Canadian coins in here, actually. I can use to pay the meter. $2.50. Hopefully that's enough to get me some time to eat. Haha. <laughs> Appreciate it, thank you. All right, so I was walking up to the meter to pay it. Some guy from across the street who was walking down that way was like, no meter on Sunday. Saved me a couple dollars, so shout out that guy. Not sure what these colors are, though. There it is. Dirty Northern, that's where we're eating lunch. Hello. Oh, just a table for one. For one? Outside, if possible. Thank you. Absolutely, what are we getting? Uh, I'm going to do the chicken tacos. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Look at that. It feels so good to finally have food. That looks delicious. It's weird. Being in Whitehorse, it almost feels like you forget that you're really in the middle of nowhere in the Yukon. But I will say it is a nice break from all the constant driving. Also, whenever I stop through places, I always like to eat a local beer. And this is the Ice Fog IPA from Yukon Brewing, and it's actually pretty good. Lunch is finished. Might walk around the city a little bit and then supposedly they have uh, wooden log skyscrapers. I think they're only a couple stories tall, but we'll walk over and check those out before we head out. So there they are right there. I think now they have been refurbished into actual apartments for people, but they were built way back in the day. So these log skyscrapers are the only ones of their kind in Canada. They have since obviously been modernized with electrical and a bunch of other stuff, but it's so cool that these were built in 1947, I think, or something like that, by some guy who's trying to modernize log cabin style living and built a three-story log skyscraper. I just thought it was really cool. I'm pretty sure it's a uh, national historic site, but it's definitely not something that many people come visit when they come to Whitehorse. But I thought it was interesting and it's cool that it was built so long ago and is still standing today with people who live in it. Admittedly though, I don't know if I would trust those balconies. But I guess they've stood the test of time. And there's also another one in the front, but it's only like one story. So it's not as cool as this wooden skyscrapers of the Yukon. Who would have thought? Anyways, I just thought it was neat. <laughs> Didn't want to leave the city without going to check those out. So pretty cool to see in person. And I think it's slightly leaning to the right now that I'm looking at it. But I think it's time to head back to the van. I just thought those skyscrapers were cool because they were built at a time when housing was at such a premium here in the Yukon that it made sense to build up instead of out like they do in cities down south with actual skyscrapers. It's just so weird to see it done in a log cabin style and the fact that it was built completely for a functional purpose and not just to kind of look cool. But um, we're back at the van. It's right over there. This is the mighty Yukon River and it is flowing at a ridiculously fast rate. I don't know how well you guys are gonna be able to tell how fast this river is flowing, but it is flowing very fast. And it's actually the reason that Whitehorse got the name Whitehorse because back before this river was dammed and was actually this high up, the Whitewater Rapids looked like the white mane of a horse, but obviously it doesn't do that anymore because the river has been dammed and has swelled up past the point where there's no Whitewater Rapids anymore. So before we head out of Whitehorse and back on the road towards our campsite tonight, there's one more place I want to stop. And it's actually starting to get hot now that the sun's out. But the last place that I want to stop is actually the world's largest weather vane. And I'll tell you guys the reason that I want to stop there once we get there, but it kind of connects to another video I did a while ago. Real Canadian Superstore, as opposed to the not real one. <laughs> there it is, the world's largest weather vane. That plane right there. And essentially what that means is that it tells the direction of the wind. So if you think like those 
little windmills or those little things on top of farmhouses that rotate with the direction of the wind. That's essentially what this is, just on a absolutely massive scale. So right there where it's mounted in the middle, whichever way the wind is blowing, this will kind of orient itself towards so you know which way the wind is coming from. And the reason that I said this thing has a connection to another video that I did is because it is a model DC-3, which is the exact same plane model that crashed on the beach in Iceland when I was there, when I went out to that plane wreck. This is the plane model that crashed. And here's a good image of them lowering it onto the mount point, but I just thought it was cool to see one that's actually not fully destroyed and give the people who watch my channel a lot and watch my Iceland series some perspective on what the plane looked like before it was crashed on that black sand beach in Iceland. But yeah, I'm just a fan of kind of checking out the weird, obscure stuff that are in each of the towns I visited. And it was just cool. This one had a connection to something else I did. Anyways, I think that is pretty much it for the town of Whitehorse. It's time to hit the road again. We've got about two more hours of driving until we get to our campsite for the night. And then I think tomorrow we're waking up and we're driving the last couple hours to the Alaskan border. So I think this is gonna be our last night in Canada. I also couldn't finish my lunch, so I got some leftovers too. Also, the one thing that's good about having to drive so much all the time and also having to use Starlink, which uses actually kind of a decent amount of power while I'm sleeping at night is that I never have to worry about my power running out on a daily basis because every night it recharges fully from all the driving that I've done. So it's nice to be able to leave the Wi-Fi on and not worry about all the lights that I use or any of the power consumption that I'm doing because I'm driving so much it just truly doesn't matter. It's gonna recharge all the way anyways. Like right now I just checked before we pulled out. My battery bank is 100% full and we still have two hours of driving left today. But this campsite that we're going to tonight is supposed to have some pretty cool views of uh, mountain ranges off in the distance. It's about a half a kilometer down a dirt road, so hopefully the van can make it because it has rained here for the past two days and I think the road that leads up to the campsite is somewhat steep, so I guess we'll see. So I just made it outside of the city back onto like the more remote section of the Alaskan Highway and something that I read about in my Mile Post book and also saw a lot about online was frost heaves, which essentially is the permafrost that's under the road. It creates these little dips and cracks in the highway that you can't really see. And it really hasn't been that bad on the highway. I don't think I've seen really any frost heaves up until pretty much this long stretch of road. I've been driving up and down and all over the place and bouncing left and right. And I think the last section of the Alaskan Highway is more known for having these frost sieves. And the best way I can describe them is they're big dips or like bumps in the road. And the reason that the permafrost causes them is because when it freezes and then thaws out, it creates these like big divots up in the road. I'll try to show you one next time I see one. All right, so there hasn't been any in the last like 10 minutes, but I had to pull over, use the bathroom. And on the highway, typically your only option is these kind of pit toilets. Pull hard. Er. There you go. Not the most luxurious of restroom experiences, but we get the job done. Much better. So there really hasn't been any frost heaves, but I'm on about a half a tank of gas. So pull in here and fill up what we can. Gas here is so weird. You always have to fill up first before hang. There she go. She's drinking. All right, let's go pay. It's gas for ya. Yep. 9017. All right, we're all filled up. We're about 10 minutes from where we're hopefully gonna camp tonight. All right, so the spot we're camping should be right around this bend, up on a hilltop on the right over here. I just hope that the road is passable. Yeah, so this is it. So we're just gonna go all the way up here, up to the top. So the road up actually doesn't look too bad. It's actually an all gravel road, so even if it was wet, I think it would still be fine. But this is something that the van can very easily handle. So now we just got to find a spot where we can camp, preferably somewhere with a nice view. It looks like there might be a campsite right up here, actually. Ay -ay 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 -ay. Oh, wow. The view of the mountains here is just spectacular. This is crazy. This is where we are going to call home for the night. 
definitely best view that we've had so far out here in Canada. This is pretty spectacular. <laughs> wow. We got a view of the entire mountain range up here and best part, we got it all to ourselves. Not a single other person is up here. So I would say this spot is most definitely a win. And it doesn't seem like there's really that many bugs and we've got some wind coming in. So the bugs really will be kind of non-existent anyways. But yeah, very happy with our spot for the last night in Canada. Campfire even comes with this nice little metal cover turtle shell thing and some firewood too. And I bet that sunset uh, probably won't set directly over the mountains, but we've got an absolutely perfectly clear sky. It kind of makes me wish it was winter because we would more than likely see the Aurora Borealis, but I'm not complaining. This is just as good. All right, so I uh, adjusted the van a little bit, so we're not blocking this trail that looks like it goes back up further somewhere in case anybody else comes up here. But I mean, just look at that. Truly don't think it gets much better. And there are these things up here, which I'm not really sure what they are, but I am very curious as to what they might be used for. I guess it's almost like rain collection or something. I mean, there's a cover on it now, but if anyone can tell me what these things are, greatly appreciated. But I honestly don't even think I'm gonna set up my Starlink tonight. I have good enough connection on my phone because we're kind of close to Haynes Junction, which is like maybe three miles down the road that way, right where kind of that mountain is. You come in on the Alaskan Highway that way and then turn up this way. And Haynes Junction does have a uh, cell tower. So I do have a couple of hours, so I'm not even gonna worry about setting up the Starlink. But I do think I am gonna set up to eat outside tonight. Normally it would be a bad thing too, that it's kind of windy, but up here it's kind of a good thing because it keeps the bugs at bay. I do have to keep an eye out for bears though. Probably get my bear spray out, and keep it somewhere accessible. And that's camp. There's a bee. Really doesn't feel like it, but um, it is <laughs> getting kind of late here. Sun doesn't set for another three hours. So back when I was down in the States, I got this, uh, I got this thing and I've been dying to use it. I'm not sure if we're going to get to it tonight, but essentially it's like a little miniature wood burning stove that you build kind of like a Lego set. So it's got these four pieces, which are the four walls and you kind of slide them together like so. And it has this bottom piece slips in there and it builds this little box. So you then put these little cross beams on, like this. And supposedly you can shove little pieces of wood in here and then put your pan on top to cook. So we're gonna try this out tonight. I think this is how I'm gonna cook dinner. I'm just gonna make a little bit of easy butter chicken. Pretty cool. So I think before I do any full scale cooking, I'm gonna run a test and see how well this thing works. And it is pretty windy out. So I'm gonna use this fire pit's little shield and kind of prop it up as a little bit of a wind block and put this under this in the fire pit. Sit right there. And that should be a nice little spot. Cook some dinner tonight. So when I got the um, little cooking fire pit, and I could just use the wood that's here, but since I have this, I might as well use it. I got these little hickory, kind of small little wood cooking chunks. So that's what we're gonna use. Hopefully they fit in there nicely, but I do have my battle ax just in case we need to chop some up a little smaller. Alrighty, I think we may need a uh, couple smaller pieces first. I'm just taking whatever I can off these bigger ones and just ripping them down into a small tinder pile. All right, we got a little something started. As long as it doesn't get blown out by the wind. All right, my other camera actually died, but we've got a fire going. Now we just gotta keep it stoked for 20 minutes and then I'll cook some dinner. All right, we've had this going for about 20 minutes. Got a nice coal bed in there. It should be good for cooking, so let's go get all the stuff we need. Before I leave though, I'll throw on another tiny little piece. I'm actually gonna take one and make a little smaller. I think we might be able to get one more out of this. There we go, beautiful. Oh, we got some tiny little pieces. 
can throw in there. All right. So tonight we're just making a quick, easy butter chicken. Also, while I was waiting for that, I pulled the van up a little closer to the fire pit. But when I was thinking about making some butter chicken, they didn't have all the ingredients I needed at the store, so I just got this butter chicken sauce. And then I also have some chicken, obviously. So very simple, easy to make dinner, which is good because it's already getting kind of late. But honestly, I want some rice as a side, and I don't really feel like cooking that over the fire, so we'll cook the chicken outside and then we'll get the rice going in here just to make things easier. And I didn't need to cook over the fire pit, obviously. I just had it and this seemed like the perfect setting to try it, so that's what I'm doing. We'll get this water boiling and get the rice in there as well while we're out there cooking the chicken. So all we really need for the chicken is some oil, the sauce, and then our chicken fillets, and I'm only gonna bring what I need out there just to make it easier. I'm also gonna grab my bear spray and bring that out there with me while I'm cooking. But water's boiling, rice is going in. Get that covered, and by the time we're done out there, rice should be on cooking as well. Got the fire stoked with a little bit extra wood. Get the pan on there, some oil in there, and let that get nice and hot. And I think I'm gonna put on a hoodie because it's actually kind of getting cold out. It's nice that this fire pit came with this little windshield too. It's actually very helpful. And also with having that indoor stove, sometimes it's just nice to cook out over an open fire. When you got a campsite like this, I mean, it just makes sense, right? All right, I think that pan might be hot enough. Throw in our chicken. And then we'll kind of just let these cook up and get nice and golden brown before we throw in that sauce. Oh, man. This might be my favorite campsite of all time. And I mean, mostly it's because the view is just spectacular, but second, it's like, nobody's out here but me. I got it all to myself. This looks so good, delicious. Let this cook for another five, seven minutes maybe, and we'll be golden to eat already. I think these are just about done. Grab myself a plate, get the rice on there, or eat. Beautiful. Take our chicken, throw that on top. Get all that, get all that extra sauce on there too. And there we go. That looks like a delicious looking butter chicken. I am so pumped to eat this. I love butter chicken. And of course, we gotta enjoy it with Diet Coke. This trip really has been everything I thought it was gonna be and more. Drive has been beautiful. Camp spots have been spectacular. Canada has been absolutely amazing. Very sad that we're gonna have to be leaving tomorrow. We're very excited to be going to Alaska. We're only three hours from the Alaskan border where we currently are right now, so we'll definitely be there tomorrow probably camp somewhere halfway in between here and Fairbanks, and then we'll be there. The journey will be 90% of the way completed. All we gotta do after that is drive up to Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse, the northernmost point that you can physically drive to in the US, and we will have completed our journey from the southernmost point in Key West, Florida, up to the northernmost point on the Arctic Ocean in Prudhoe Bay, Alaska. And to say I'm excited would be an understatement. This is great. And also with the midnight sun, we get like three hours of sunset. So there's no rush to watching golden hour of the sunset over the mountains because basically from 7 to 11.30 p.m. it's constant sunset. And it's almost 10.45 and we've still got that much light left, so. A lot of Icelandic memories are coming back today. The midnight sun, the DC3, and amazing campsites. But with that being said, it is really late. I'm eating a very late dinner. So I'm probably just gonna finish this butter chicken and then hunger down in the van for one last night in Canada, so. As always, I truly, truly appreciate you guys watching. It means the absolute world to me. I'm very excited that we're almost there. And don't worry, even when this Alaska adventure is over, there's gonna be a ton more videos, a ton more trips I'm gonna go on in this van, hopefully in some other vehicles and doing a bunch of new camping videos. So it's not over after this. So again, appreciate you guys watching. And I will catch you guys next time.